like so much can happen and it's so unpredictable, so you just need to get going. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, someone actually recommended, maybe I should call you guys dreamers, whoever is viewing these videos. So what's up dreamers? <laughs> um, in today's video and in this series, I'm gonna be introducing you to some of the people of Launch House, which is actually where I'm at right now. It is a house that brings together 20 plus founders and entrepreneurs to live together for a month and maybe launch their next big thing. And so currently I am living in Paris Hilton's $35 million mansion in Beverly Hills. And I'm on my third week here at Launch House and it's been a lot of fun meeting all of the people in the house. Everyone is incredibly smart, talented, and are doing some really exciting things. So in today's video, I'm gonna be introducing you to Katherine Cross. She is the founder of Bridge Strategy, which is a marketing consultancy, and she also is a model, a UX UI designer, and she also started her own podcast called the Statement Piece Podcast, and it zeroes in on fashion and business with a social justice lens. So she loves fashion and um, I'm really excited for you to meet her today. She's gonna also share her story on how she got started on both of those things and provide some tips for anyone that might be interested in starting their own business or consulting service or even a podcast of your own. Today, we're going to Melrose, the butcher, the baker, the cappuccino maker. We're just gonna sit and chat. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and get something out of it. Let's get into it. Okay. So I'm here with Catherine, and she is the founder of Bridge Strategy, which is a marketing consulting agency, and the Statement Piece podcast, which is a podcast which talks about social justice, business, and pop culture. And we both met at Launch House, the third cohort, which brings 20 plus entrepreneurs together to launch really cool products and create together. And today I'm just going to share a little bit of her story of what she started and some tips for you guys. Yes. So Bridge Strategy is a management and marketing consultancy where we help small businesses and startups pre-launch with management and marketing pain points. So things like social media strategy and also pricing strategy. And my podcast is on uh, so fashion and pop culture with a business and social justice lens. What's the story behind how both of those got started? Yeah, so I started Bridge Strategy and Same in Peace around the same time. Started my consultancy because I wanted to put my own knowledge and a lot of my friends' knowledge to good use. Um, a lot of my friends especially have a lot of experience with consulting, so I thought it would be good if we could help out some of our friends' parents, for instance, if they own a small business. Um, especially during COVID, I think a lot of businesses were struggling. And then with my podcast, I was always having similar conversations to what we have on the podcast with my co-host. So we just thought it would be good to put it on a platform. I love that you talk about the social justice side of things and you're kind of bringing more of the awareness to like the origination of fashion, which I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about. Yeah. Where did that passion stem from? Yeah, I think it stems from my brother. So my brother has cerebral palsy and I think watching my mom always unconditionally love my brother really taught me that you should never judge someone based upon their physical qualities or any kind of qualities. I think you should just always value someone for who they are. And I think my brother is like really happy and joyous and such. So my mom has always loved him unconditionally for that reason. And so I think it just taught me that any kind of marginalized group shouldn't be marginalized just because they're part of a certain ethnicity or um, even like age or things like that. And so I try to do what I can to assess where there's marginalization and see if I can do anything to at the very least educate myself on it so that I can be better informed on how to come up with solutions in the future. How is that? come out in other parts of your life or I mean whether it's yeah. the marketing consultancy or how is that I guess shown Yeah I mean I think even with bridge strategy especially I really thought about it because I wanted to be an ethical employer. I read so many articles about unethical employment and poor treatment of workers and even with my modeling sometimes I would have gigs that I felt like I was being underpaid or they would say that they didn't have a budget but then I knew other models were getting paid and working conditions weren't the best sometimes especially during COVID I, I like wouldn't go to a set if it wasn't really um, cautious yeah. and so I just had to make sure that 
the working standards were good. Um, and so I just thought a lot about that with bridge strategy, especially as we move from a pro bono to a paid model. I was just thinking a lot about how to compensate myself and the workers um, and how to just make sure that I can cultivate a healthy working environment. Yeah. Yeah, tell me more about the podcast and how that experience has been for you. Because I'm sure there are other people out there that want to start a podcast. One, they don't know how. And then two, they probably might not even realize like how impactful it could be even for themselves. I know that you spoke before, like it helps you realize how much you love fashion. Yeah. Like yeah. Just made an account on Anchor and then we recorded our first episode and the recording logistics are a little bit weird because my co-host and I are all not in the same location. Right. So we started recording through the app Anchor and then we also did it by recording Zooms. Um, and things like that. So it was a little bit complicated because we would try and FaceTime and record on Anchor or like Zoom, but ultimately I think Zoom is the best. Yeah, and then you're able to like extract the audio from Yeah, Zoom and then, and then we all, that. yeah, we use yeah. the video as well for our YouTube channel. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Right. cool. Yeah, so it seems pretty simple then. Started putting it up on YouTube. We um, now use iMovie to edit it. Okay. And oh, then cool. we use GarageBand, but most recently I found out about this software called The Script. It like writes out the words that you're saying as you're saying them for video and audio and it makes it easier to edit because you can edit it like a book. What are some other future episodes that you are thinking about launching? Yeah. yeah, so our episodes that are coming up, one is with Audrey Hilfiger, mm -hmm. who is a model and entrepreneur, and she started some candle companies, mm -hmm. and also had a flower uh, bouquet, like organizing company, right. okay. bouquet designing company, and then um, we also have another episode coming up with one of my friends, Varshi, who I actually know through High School Model UN. Yeah. Um, but, or no, it was a college Model UN program, but she works at TikTok now as a creative producer. And so we just talked to her about South Asian representation yeah. in the TikTok space and entertainment, and then yeah. also her job and what she does as a creative producer, which was really interesting because she started at TikTok the day that they rebranded as TikTok from ByteDance. Really? Well, yeah, so she yeah. was there like really, really early on, like yeah. in 2018, yeah. when like Charlie D'Amelio wasn't even on the app. Oh, dang. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. How did you get connected with all of the different people that you find to interview? Yeah, you just so, reach out to them? Yeah, I'll just yeah. DM them on Instagram um, or I'll meet them at through personal connections or if I see someone do something interesting then I'll just like try and email them yeah just trying to be scrappy basically yeah what are some tips that you have for people that want to start a podcast yeah, yeah. Um, I think just try and identify if you want to do a podcast for yourself or for others because I think um, I think like growth of an audience may require content that you may not necessarily want to produce I guess and you just have to be conscious of what you're doing more so if you're looking for growth. I continue to do it because I enjoy doing it yeah. and I don't think I would compromise any piece of that yeah. for growth yeah. but I think we have looked at elements of growth in the past. What do you have for people interested in starting like a consulting business or kind of a service in general? Yeah, because I'm sure that there are people out there that maybe they have an idea or they have like a service that they want to sell, but they really have no clue how to get started or maybe something. Yeah, to back. like for me, it, the first step was creating the website because it's something tangible that I'm like working towards. Right. And then in terms of doing the planning of the business plan, I, I figured that I could just do that as I was writing our website description yeah. and like the about us page. Yeah. Um, so that was my first step. Yeah. Like so much can happen and it's so unpredictable. So you just need to get going. Yeah, that's true. That's what I've been hearing from everyone else. It's like just get going. <laughs> yeah. Just get yeah. Do you typically plan out all of your episodes? How does that process go? Like do you, yeah. do you research? Do you like plan out the questions like what's the process we do plan the questions but for the most part I don't go by them because mm -hmm. sometimes it's unnatural in the flow yeah. of conversation yeah. and also for the episodes um, my co-host mainly plans them I would say because she is very organized about kind of the perception of our episodes and content so for instance if we have too many guests we will space them out with an episode of just us right we record um, Pretty much once a week. Yeah. yeah. If we if we have pre-recorded episodes, it's only because we reached out to a lot of guests who happen to respond at the same time. Got it. So it's like you record it, post it that week, and then next week yeah, record yeah. it, post it. Yeah. So yeah. every week we're working on it because um, we also take turns editing. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, every week, there, one of us is editing. So we edit the week, the like few days prior yeah. um, to release. And yeah. Well, how long is the editing process usually? Oh my gosh, it kind of takes a while. And is it usually like a long podcast and you have to edit it down? Yeah. Or that? And then we you like take out the most interesting moments? Or, like, how does yeah. That work? So we usually do an hour and a half or an hour mm -hmm. for the recording itself. And then when we edit things down, it probably ends up being like 50 minutes without all of the like pauses and things that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but we try to cap it at 30 because we used to not cap it. Um, yeah. But then we, you can see your analytics on Anchor mm -hmm. and there was a drop off at about 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we tried to cap it at 30 and yeah. we had one episode that was an hour and we were like, well, it was a really long episode. Yeah. yeah. But it's weird because people like how, like podcasts like how I built this, yeah. they're pretty long. Yeah, some of them are long. And I don't yeah. think it's like a problem, mm -hmm. but I think yeah. for something like fashion, it's so niche and people may think frivolous as well so yeah. I think if they see an hour-long podcast yeah. related to fashion they might get intimidated. What do you think is the ultimate vision for the podcast? Yeah so I think we would like to potentially launch a brand off of it so that's kind of things we've been brainstorming um, but we have like a vision board and like 2021 goals so I think especially when the pandemic is a bit better I think we would like to like meet up with people and um, we have like community events. We've talked to some people who have worked in fashion community types yeah. uh, publications before about what we can do to kind of build out a community yeah. and things like that. So. So that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit about Catherine and the cool things that she's doing. And I'm going to leave the Brit Strategy website, her podcast, and her Instagram, and all of her socials in the links below if you want to check out any of those. And yeah, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to join the Global Dream Team community if you haven't yet. And comment below letting me know what is your favorite thing that you heard from Catherine in this video. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!